four lost lambs. On a snowy afternoon in January, Arthur and Mary Wright sat in school listening to a story told by their teacher, Miss West. Once said Miss West, there was a shepherd who had a hundred sheep. One night he counted one, two, three, four, five, till he came to ninety-nine. So he counted again. One, two, three, four, five, but still he only had ninety-nine sheep instead of a hundred. One sheep was lost. It was a little lamb that had run away from the other sheep. The shepherd said, I will go and find my lost lamb. He walked a long, long way. As he went, he called, Lamb, where are you? But there was no answer. He looked into a dark, dark wood. He climbed a great high mountain. Suddenly he heard a sound. <laughs> and there was his lost lamb. Arthur said, I know, the Lord Jesus is the good shepherd, and his sheep and his lambs are people like us. Quite right, said Miss West. After school, Arthur and Mary hurried to Rose Farm to tell their, the story to their brother George, who was four. I must run across and speak to Miss Pipkin, said Mother. Will you find George, please, and bring him in? He was playing in the yard with a broom just now. Arthur and Mary went into the farmyard, but no George was there. His birch broom was lying flat on the trampled snow. He couldn't be found in the cow shed, cart shed, tool shed, wood shed, pigsty. The barn was empty. The hayloft ladder was lying on the floor as flat as George's broom. George can't be in the hayloft, said Arthur, for he couldn't have climbed into it without a ladder. He must be inside the house after all. One by one, they searched every room in the house. They went at last to Big Brother David's room, which had not been slept in since he left home. Neither of them could even remember David. They peeped behind the curtains, into the wardrobe, under the bed. Arthur cried out, Here he is! I've got him! Where? Where? cried Mary. In the bed, hiding. I feel him warm, said Arthur. With an excited squeal, Arthur pulled back the bedclothes. The squeal became a yelp. It wasn't George, said Arthur in disgust. It was an extremely hot, hot water bottle that Mommy had put into the bed to keep it aired. I wonder why Mommy bothers to do that when David never comes home, said Mary. But we mustn't ask, Arthur. Mommy and Daddy are sad when we talk about David. I believe, whispered Arthur, that David got lost in the like the lamb in the story. Oh dear, I do hope George hasn't gone and lost himself too. They ran downstairs to search the garden. Arthur pointed to a side path that led into Blackberry Lane. Look, he said, George's shoes walking along and large shoes walking beside them. Are you sure they're George's shoes? asked Mary. They are the pair that Daddy mended, said Arthur. On damp ground, that patch makes a queer mark. Oh, Mary, some thief has come into the garden and stolen George. Run! We will catch, we will catch them up and we will take George away from that wicked person. He can't have gone far. The two children ran down the path and scampered along Blackberry Lane. The large footprints and the little footprints went on steadily side by side, from Blackberry Lane to Friston Common. Across Friston Common went the large shoes and the little shoes, down Brookside Peace over Ponter's Bridge and into Black Dingle. Arthur and Mary began to hear sounds of talking. We are overtaking them, said Arthur. They ran deeper into Black Dingle. Ahead of them walked a woman and a little boy. The boy was George. Yes, he was George beyond a doubt. George wore his dark blue overcoat and his bright blue gloves. Wisps of yellow hair poked through the folds of the red comforter that had been tied over his hat. Arthur and Mary sprang forward, grabbed George, and almost squeezed the breath out of his little body. George gave a piercing yell. They looked and their arms dropped.
There stood Jackie Bent from Watermill Colleges, Cottages and Mrs. Bent. George, he's lost, was all Arthur and Mary could say. We thought Jackie was George. I'm not surprised, said Mrs. Bent. I called at Rose Farm this afternoon, and your mother kindly gave me some of the clothes that George had, out, had grown out of. George will turn up all right, went on Mrs. Bent cheerily. Can you find your way home, or shall I come with you? Arthur and Mary thought they knew the way home, but snow was soon falling so fast that they could not see which way to go. After they had wandered far and wide, the moon shone out to show them they were astray somewhere on the rugged, lonely moor. At last they saw a light moving toward it and went toward it. In the dimness, Arthur stumbled into a muddy, weedy water of moor pool. Mary screamed. A voice rang out of the darkness. Hi, who's there? What's up? Come quick, shrieked Mary. My brother's drowning. The voice called back. He can't drown. Pool's too shallow. It was a nice voice, rather like Daddy's, Mary thought. Through the dancing snowflake came a tall young man in a rough coat and gum boots, a shepherd's candle, candle lantern in his hand. He gave Mary the lantern to hold, and he hauled Arthur out of the sticky mud. There you are, old chap, as right as a trivet, he said. Better come with me to Shep's hut for a drink of hot tea. Who are you, and what brought you out on the moor in a snowstorm? To be continued.